It's Wednesday morning, July 10th, and it, what, it's such a lovely, cool, and refreshing morning. The ground is still a little wet from yesterday's rain, and I hear an occasional drop, drip. It might be a dew drop, but it also might be a raindrop that was hanging in one of these tall vines finding its way to the ground. This is my second trip out this morning. The first time I came out was, was about five. I needed to take my dog out. I'd been up riding and the dogs had thought, well, since about 5.10, that it was time to go outside. Finally, I, I took her out. And while she was eating, I ran over here to this little place that I'm creating, my, my new morning coffee place. Yesterday I talked about building the support around it and how I was gonna grow wisteria on this, on this, this arbor that I'm putting up here. I'm trying to hide the fact that I live in a 1960s ranch house. That's one thing. But so there, that wall will be a wall of wisteria vines, purple blossoms, a pink uh, zephyrine druid rose will probably go there because she could tolerate some shade. She's not thorny and she won't poke me when I try to drink my coffee. Um, but I want to show you that what's going to happen very soon, very quickly, the wisteria will fill this whole area and there won't be room for this chair and this little desk here, this little table. So it's, I'm gonna have to move it somewhere else. And, and I like to write from this side of my garden because, and to think and to have coffee and to reflect because from that side, I can see what's on the other side or what's trying to happen on the other side which is the main view of my garden. So I want to be sitting with my back to the wall, looking ahead. And that kind of brings me to my topic for today. This morning when I got up, I was writing about how I'm 74 years old. My first picture book wasn't published until I was 72. And now I'm wondering, am I over the hill? Is my back against the wall? Or do I have some more good years to go ahead of me? And after a while to think about it, which like I'm talking a couple of years, I decided that I'm not too old to write. I still have lots of good years. I'm gonna be the Grandma Moses of picture book writers. So, uh, right now I'm having I'm having another hot time. I'm, I'm 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 producing again, and when I'm when I'm in a productive phase, I'm almost manic. When I'm not, I'm like just the opposite doldrums. And after my picture book was published. I went, to, it would seem that, uh, actually, as soon as I found out that the picture book was going to be published, I, I had a, a period of, of uh, not depression, but just almost doubt and confusion. I couldn't understand why the book was picked, why that manuscript was picked out of other others that I submitted at that time. And and I, I, I had become accustomed the things not going right in my life. I doubted and for two years. I knew for two and a half, or two, two and a half years, two and a half years before it was published that the book, the manuscript was bought two and a half years before it was published and I knew it was coming. But then I all, but COVID came and other things happened. I thought, oh yeah, this is gonna be another, another, disappointment this isn't going to work out either it's not going to happen so until the day i saw it at the bookstore i really didn't believe it was going to get published but it did 
in spite of all my naysaying and negativity, it was published. And then I didn't, but about the time that it got published, I realized I went on a book tour of Mississippi and, and, and then I realized that I needed to move back to Mississippi. I had lived in New Jersey for a while. After that, I lived in the Ozark Mountains. But of all places, although I didn't, wasn't born and wasn't a child in Mississippi, I came to Mississippi when I was 18 years old to go to college. And, and I lived here for about 35 more years. And then I moved away. Um, but now, but so I decided, and so the, as soon as the book was published, I jumped into a flurry of getting ready to move, packing, saying goodbye to one phase of my life, trying to spring toward the other. I was in sort of a free fall, and that free fall lasted another year. So a year and a half after the, my book was published, I'm finally ready to start again. I told a funny story this morning when I'm writing. Uh, I, I am not, I am a little old to be writing things for today's children because the only, my only understanding of childhood is my own. And, and, and fortunately, I spent a long time telling stories and being a children's librarian in New Jersey. So I read a lot of picture books and I, I knew that, that the market and the world and children themselves had changed drastically. Some changes were for the good and others weren't. But I, I started sending manuscripts to my editor, the same person that had loved the donkey song and she rejected one thing after another. Finally, she said, this sounds like Robert Louis Stevenson. Well, she wasn't complimenting me. My mother, who died in, Je in December or January at the age of 97, has been my support all my life. For 74 years, I had the support of a good mother, and for about 60 something years, I had the support of a good parent, father. But my mother, my father was busy doing his own thing. My mother, although not as creative as I am, has, been, has always been my support structure. And, um, in fact, I'll tell a story in a minute if I think of it, but let me go on and finish this thought. So I always, every step of my writing efforts in my writing career, I communicate promptly with, in fact, for years I would write to my mother. I would talk to my mother on, on the phone and I would read my stories that I was writing to her and she was just thrilled and, and in fact, when my picture book was bought, my mother, who had lived through the Depression and was almost a matchstick girl when she was a child, was my biggest, bought more picture books than any other person that I can think of. But my mother said, wonderful, wonderful. She thinks you sound like Robert Louis Stevenson. Well, Robert Louis Stevenson is a has-been. In fact, he's dead. He's such a has-been. He wrote Treasure Island. He was famous for a while, but then he published a, a, a collection of children's verses, nursery rhymes and such, and, and called the Children's Garden of Verses. And that's what my mother was thinking. And at one time, it was the cat's meow. In fact, that was the only pink children's book I had until I was about 25. So uh, it was, it's really all I knew about children's literature for many, many years. So it's understandable that to my editor, my writing sounded like Char Robert Louis Stevenson. 
but the writing market has changed. I'm in a crossroads. I don't want to write about Walter the farting dog or aliens who love underpants. When I was a child, no one would, I never heard, my parents didn't even say the word fart. It still makes me blush to hear that word. And if you ever heard anything about underpants, it was, I see Christmas, I see France, I see someone's underpants. You didn't talk about underpants when I was a child. And if I ever heard that, I knew it was time for me to yank up my petticoat. Well, kids today never heard of a petticoat. Mine was always showing, just a bit. Kind of a metaphor for the rest of my life. But anyway, so I don't speak the same language that the kids today speak, not in, not in many ways. I'm irrelevant in many ways, but in some ways I'm not. People still love rain. That's not out of style. Still, people still like moons and stars. That's not out of style. My challenge is to find a new way to say the same old things.